Right, today we're going to be checking free life from Germany. And we're going to be checking out 20 German words Americans use all the time and their real meanings. Yeah, this is going to be a really interesting video because I'm going to have my British spin on it. To see what kind of words Americans are using that are German. I might even know the words that Americans are using and stuff and see if we use them over here as well. Yeah, I'm actually excited to jump into this and see what we got. You have definitely used these words before in English, maybe uh, even on a daily basis, but did you know that they're actually German? Right, this is gonna be interesting. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I have been living in Cincinnati, Ohio, off and on since 2016. Nice. So a few weeks ago, I made a video about 20 English words that we use in German, and a lot of them actually have a completely different meaning in German than they do in English, like old timer, just to give one example, which refers to an old person in English. Old timer, but to German right. speakers, an old timer is a vintage car. Check out the video to find out about the other 19 I might have heard of that before, that we actually. use differently in German. But today I'll talk about the opposite, basically. So about German words that are used in English. Oh, I'm probably just linking old timer, old person, old car. <laughs> Tip <for tat. laughs> There aren't nearly as many German words in English as there are English words in German, but there are actually right. more than you would think. And a lot of them are words that people use all the time, but they don't really know that it's a German word. And even I wasn't really aware of how many German words are used in English. So for me, it was super surprising every time I first heard someone use one of those words. Right. Like they're just saying something in English and suddenly I'm like, wait, Wait, what? You just spoke German? That's so for good. today's video, I made a list of 20 German words that are used in English. And I just picked the ones that are either used a lot or that I just thought were funny or interesting. Right, okay. But before we this start with be the good. list, now here are 20 German words that are used in English. Right, what we got? Kind of Let's start with one of the most known ones. Bro, I should have guessed this. Wait, did you guys know this was German already? Kindergarten? See, like, we don't say this in the UK, but we are, like, I've obviously heard this a lot from, like, shows and just everything. Everyday life, right? And that is kindergarten. In German, we pronounce kindergarten. it kindergarten, and it literally means children's garden. And even though the word is used in a very similar way in the two languages, right. it's not 100% the same. In Germany, kindergarten isn't part of the school system, but it's more like a daycare. Kids can go there from the age of three up until they start first grade. It's similar. But it's not mandatory for parents to send their kids to kindergarten. Right. And there's no mandatory curriculum either. Some kids may practice math and writing in kindergarten, but it's not a class setting. And the focus is usually more on playing and activities like doing crafts singing together, going on field trips and those kind of things. While in the US, kindergarten is the year before. See, I always thought it was kindergarten. I didn't realize it was kindergarten. <laughs> For first grade, and it's part of the school system. That's why it's also called K to 12, kindergarten to 12th grade. So oh. the kindergartens usually belong to a school and are a little more focused on academics. So oh. same word, but different meaning in Germany and the US. And what I find funny is that the German concept of kindergarten is what Americans also call preschool sometimes, while Vorschule, the literal translation for preschool in German, basically stands for the American concept of kindergarten. So it's somewhat switched. Some German kindergartens- Hey, that, that was done on purpose. They was like, hey, we take this word, you have this word, and we'll switch the words, right? Cool. Do offer a Vorschule the year before first grade Vorschule. to prepare the kids a little academically. How was this? Gesunde. Gesunde. What is that? I've never seen that word in my life. I actually had no clue that Americans used this German word yeah, before same. I came here. And the first time I heard it, it sounded so funny to me. Gesundheit is what Gesundheit. we say for bless you in German. And Americans seem to use it that way too. Especially huh? among younger people, I found that they usually use it in a more funny way. But it can also be just used with a normal tone. I have never heard. Right, listen, at this point. I've been watching American videos for like two, three months, right? I've spoke to so many Americans on stream, like DMs, 
in calls. I've known Americans for for my whole life, right? Gaming and stuff, movies, shows. I've never heard an American say Gesundheit. Ever. <laughs> Ever in my life. The word I know I'm not from America. But yeah, interesting. Let me know in the comment section if you guys use this. Itself actually just means health in German. So whenever right. someone sneezes, we wish them health. Oh, yeah. Just like Gesundheit, Kapoor? I didn't know that this word was used in English before I moved to the US. Never heard of it. We spell it with two T's in Germany, but we pronounce it the same way. Kaputt. And it basically... Oh, is that like stay put? Like kaput? Nah, I'm, I, I'm reaching here. I'm reaching. Basically has the same meaning in both languages. It means broken, damaged, or destroyed. As in, my phone is kaput. My handy is kaput. No, oh, I'm never... I, I don't believe they use that. Like, I, I'm not the one to sit here and say Americans don't use it because I don't live in America. But I've never heard it. Ever. Or it can also mean exhausted, as in, I went hiking for eight hours today and I'm so kaputt. Ich bin heute acht Stunden gewandert. Ich bin total kaputt. Ich bin heute acht Stunden gewandert. Ich bin total kaputt. kaputt. And just like in German, where we say etwas geht kaputt, you also say something goes kaputt in English. Ay, doppelganger. I think everyone says doppelganger everywhere. It means pretty much like your twin, but not your twin, but they're pretty much they're pretty much identical to you, right? It's like your double doppelganger. I never realized that was German. Another one which I wow. love hearing in English is doppelganger. doppelganger, especially because it seems kind of funny to me that you would use a rather long German word that even has an umlaut. I mean, okay, in English oh, we don't it's spell usually written with just an a. But people could also right. just say lookalike or double in English. Why use doppelganger? I can't lie, it's a cool word. Doppelganger is definitely a cool word. I like that word. Lookalike, doppelganger, doppelganger sounds better. Anyway, I think it's fun. And I think I first found out about this when I watched the American show How I Met Your Mother in English as a teenager. Because... Yeah, I learned this word. Don't judge me. Do not judge me, right? I actually really love the show and everyone judges me when I say this. I learned this word from The Vampire Diaries. <laughs> yes, I watched The Vampire Diaries. I really enjoyed it. In fact, do you want to know something crazy? Oh God, you guys are going to judge me. <coughs> Unless you've watched it as well. I've actually seen it twice over fully. Yeah, we're just gonna leave it at that. That's like a whole theme on that show to find all the main characters doppelgangers. Stein! This one I just recently used in my video on oh, Stein. alcohol culture oh, wait, no, in not Germany Stein. and the US. And I have to say that it still feels kind of weird to me every time I use this word in English. Or even when I just hear it. Because it English? actually has a completely different meaning in German. Beer Stein, or just Stein in English, refers to a beer mug. Ah. Traditionally made out of stoneware, but it can also refer to the more modern glass mugs. Interesting. While in German, Stein means stone, and the beer mug is called Bierkrug. Some of my German... Hey, you never know, the glass might be made out of... Oh wait, it wouldn't be glass if it's made out of stone. They might have a mug that's made out of stone. That's why it was called Stein. Maybe the first people that was like, yo, you know what? Give me a Stein. It's just a stone. German viewers actually commented on my alcohol video and told me that in some parts of Rheinland-Pfalz, in the western part of Germany, people also use the word Stein when they refer to a liter of something. Right. So they would so say, like a pine. Einstein Bier bitte. One liter of beer, please. It seems to be a regional thing, though. I... Yeah, in the UK, you'd be like, a pint of beer. So you're like, Einstein und bitter. I had never heard about this before. And I'm curious if there is any connection to the English use of the word. But I couldn't really find anything about this. So let me know if you know more about it. Yeah, you guys got definitely, like, 100% let me know in the comment section. Especially if you're American watching this. Do you use these words? Have you heard these words? Etc. right? Because... I'm from the UK, so I'm just going off what I know, and I don't live in America, so there's definitely words that I've never heard before that you guys probably use, um, but yeah, I'm just going off what I know, so I'm, I, I could be totally wrong with my opinion, sir. So.
Spiel. The next one is Spiel, and even though this has a different meaning than the word does in German, I really like the English meaning because we don't really what would have it mean a German in English? equivalent for it. In English, Spiel is a kind of ah! speech, especially one that is long and spoken quickly and is intended to persuade the person listening about something. Jesus, man. That's like a very, I would say that's like, that's like a very posh American way for say, like to say speech. Spiel. So this is often Never used heard of it, in though. sales situations. And for example, you could say something like, oh, they gave me the whole spiel about why their university is the best in the country. Oh, now that she gave me an example, I might have heard it before, actually. In like a show or something. I think I have. I think I've actually heard of it used in America before. In German, Spiel, capitalized, simply means game, and Spielen means to play. Uh, stall. This okay, one is everyone not used stall. exactly a loan word from the German language, but it does have. Yeah, UK, like, obviously, we've, uh, we've said stall before. And people do say, but not as much. But yeah, we know, I, I know what a stall Germanic is. Germanic origins. And I included it in this list because I personally think that it sounds exactly like the German word Stuhl. But it's Stuhl. actually a so-called false friend because it has a different meaning in the two languages. Oh, Stuhl liar! in German is a chair, while Stuhl in English is what we call Hocker in German. Huh? Kind of similar, oh, but wait, yeah. not quite the same. Oh, wait, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what we call a Stuhl. Alright, cool. Yo, this is actually really interesting that this is German. Like, the word is German. German. Kind of similar, but not quite the same thing. But then again, I think that's a fake one. I think that's a fake link right there. The, that, that's just a, a German word that sounds similar. Huh? Dashend? When Americans first used this word with me, I had no clue what they were talking about because I wasn't familiar with the word. Is it a dog? And I also couldn't tell that it was supposed to be a German word with the English pronunciation. But now I know that Dachshund can be used in German as well, but it's actually more common to call the dogs Dackel in German. Literally, this compound word consists it's of a dog. Dax, Badger, and Hund, dog. A badger dog, basically. And this is because the dogs were traditionally it supposed a to crawl into burrows and look for badgers. <laughs> Wiener. Okay. Okay. Right. So in the UK, we would say Wiener for, you know, I don't want to get demonetized or anything. And I, I don't know how like YouTube's TOS is. So the Wiener is pretty much like down there right that's what we would say wiener for in america you say wiener for like like a the, the like a sausage hot dog maybe say in things. english this can also be used to describe a dachshund wiener dog oh. but it can also refer to just a yo i don't have one of them down there what? <laughs> that's a wiener a wiener sausage or oh, yeah, it's that, also that's often about. used instead of penis Oh, you can't say penis on YouTube. Oh, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, we say in the UK, we would say Wiener for penis. <laughs> in German, we say Wiener. The German W is pronounced like an English V, and it usually refers to the sausage. Wiener Würstchen would be the long version. Uh, it can thing. also refer to a Wiener Schnitzel, which is also something to eat, or what, it can fish? simply be used for a person from the Austrian city of Vienna, which is Wien in German. Bro, you would never realize, like, how did I not realize that Wiener is German? I'm fluent in German. Well, I'm not fluent in German. All I know is das ist gut and das ist wunderbar. But Wiener, it sounds German. Now that I think about it, yo, this is going to change my thought process. This, this video is going to ruin me. It actually is. This is going to change my thought process to everything. <laughs> Every time I say Wiener, now, I'm going to think of German. Das ist gut. Wanderlust. Wanderlust. This is kind of oh. an old-fashioned German word that we pronounce Wanderlust. And yeah, you don't really hear Wanderlust much now. I've definitely heard of it, but... And it's literally the desire to wander. So it means you right. want to travel. The word was used a lot in the literature of the Romantic era, but you can also call this Reiselust or Fernweh in German, which the last one is also an interesting word because it's kind of like the opposite of Heimweh, which is homesickness. So Fernweh pretty much means far sickness. Ah, uh, cool. 
Angst. I don't this know what this is. This one is very similar to the German one, but it's not 100% the same. Oh, Angst, nice. Capitalized in German and with the German A, oh, basically it's the same. just means fear. And angst in English is also related to fear, but it just means fear. Wait, how did you say in German? Angst, capitalized in German and angst. with the German A, basically just means fear. And angst in English. So angst and angst is also related to fear but it describes a broader feeling of anxiety and apprehension it's often used in connection with teenagers teenage angst is what a lot of young people experience really? throughout puberty and you can also say you're feeling angsty in english are you guys angsty right now you guys use that word angsty i've never heard of it in my life so in english it describes more of a general feeling whereas in german Angst haben means to be scared of something. Right. And that's usually something a little more specific, like you're scared of the spider. Angst the English haben. meaning of angst doesn't have a good translation in German, but it could be translated with something like Existenzangst or innere Unruhe or Angstzustände. Yo, that's a long translation for angst. Jesus. Gee, look at that. Hitch. Hitch is a concept that's really hard to explain, actually. But according to the dictionary, it describes art, decorative objects, or design considered by many people to be ugly, without style, or false, but enjoyed by many other people, often because they are funny. So wow. you could say, his Mate. home is full of 1950s kitsch. It means the same thing in German and in English. This is mad. This is actually crazy because it's just blowing my mind. The one, you're like, if you're from America and you're watching this, you probably don't realize that these words are German. And then two, I'm watching this, I didn't realize these words was even said by Americans that was used by Germans. So I'm watching it, not realizing the Americans say these words, whilst the Americans are watching it, realizing that you guys not realizing that you're saying german words and uh, this is some crazy like tree freeway going on right now tree that no i should have used three trio thing english and it's also pronounced the same i'm so angst there's also the english adjective kitschy which is kitschig in german blitzkrieg this is a military blitzkrieg. term and describes a strategy of warfare that includes short and fast attacks. Right. The term is often used in connection with World War II, but it actually had been used way before that. We pronounce it Blitzkrieg in German and it literally translates to lightning war because Blitz is lightning and Krieg is war. Right. Uh, Blitz. That's used in the UK a lot. Like pe people will be like, it's not used a lot, but people would say, I'm going to blitz or f as in like fast. It's used the same way in both languages. And they even adapted the word blitz as a tactic in American football. Cool. Oh my God. This is, this is German to the T. Schandenfrude. Yeah, this is German to the T. This seems to be a very popular word in the US. Really? I've been asked about this so many times. And what makes it so special is that this concept doesn't even really exist in the English language, which is why ah. there isn't an English word to describe it, which is probably quite a strong statement about the German culture. Schadenfreude consists of... Sch Schadenfreude. Ha Wait, Americans are saying Schadenfreude? And it's very common. <laughs> what? Which is probably quite a strong statement about the German culture. Schadenfreude consists of Schaden, which means damage or harm, and Freude, which means joy. So this is the joy that you feel when someone else gets harmed or fails. So not very nice. Yo, that's messed up. Bro, that's messed up, man. What, this word's just common? So in America, a lot of you guys are enjoying people being hurt. Shadow Friday. <laughs> Mad. Foosball. All sports. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. Americans don't say foosball? Huh? You guys call football soccer? Sports fans should know this one. Foosball in German means soccer or football in British English. 
Foosball in English refers to the bar game, which oh. we usually call kicker or Tischfußball. Oh, you guys call this foosball. Ah, right. Okay. 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 I was tripping. I was tripping. German. This is another concept like that doesn't have its own English translation, just like Schadenfreude, and therefore the German word is used in English and some other languages too. Americans usually say Zeitgeist, in German we pronounce it Zeitgeist, and this consists of the word Zeit, which means time, and Geist, which means spirit. Uh, so Zeitgeist is the spirit of the time, which describes what's what is going that? on culturally, religiously, and intellectually during a certain time period. Woodstock right. was part of the 1960s Zeitgeist, for example. And in English, they even made it an adjective, which we don't even have in German, Zeitgeisty. <laughs> it kind of sounds good, I'm not gonna lie. I see why they did that. But yeah, I've never heard of that. Schnapps. Wait, I've heard of snaps. I forgot what snaps is though. Schnapps. This one I also mentioned in my video on alcohol culture. Seen this a lot. In German, we spell it like this and say schnapps. Oh, is schnapps a type of drink? Is that what it is? And it means hard liquor. In right. English, it's mostly used as part of the name of certain liquors like right. peppermint schnapps yeah. or peach schnapps. I've heard snaps a lot. Wunderkind. Wonderkind in English. Wunderkind in German, and this literally translates to miracle child. Wunder is miracle, Kind is child. Cool. Why has no one ever called me a Wunderkind? <laughs> so it describes a person that is very clever or talented and that's, becomes... That's why. <laughs> that's why I've never been called a Wunderkind. Ever. <laughs> you gotta be clever. Child. So it describes a person that is very clever or talented and becomes successful at a young age. Uh, One of the me. most common examples for a Wunderkind is Mozart. Oh my... Bro, how did we never think this was German, man? It just didn't cross my mind. Poltergeist... Of course Poltergeist is German. Poltergeist. That's his good. Geist. This looks a little bit similar to Zeitgeist. If you couldn't tell, we use that a lot in UK as well. <laughs> Poltern means to clatter and Geist means ghost or spirit. And right. this particularly describes a ghost that makes noises in the house and moves objects. Whether you believe in that or not ah. is a different story. Schmutz. And last but not least, the final word on my Never list is Schmutz. This one is pronounced and used the same way in both languages. It's smuts like a kiss, so I'd be like, give me a smuts. And it means dirt. And oh. schmutzy in English or schmutzig in German means dirty. Ah, oh, never mind. Never mind. I'm way off with that. So this was my way list off. of 20 German words that are used in English. And that was there are good. many, many more, of course, especially regarding food like pretzel, bratwurst, or. Oh my. Bro, I didn't even think of pretzel. Actually, no, 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 that's a lie. I did. No, I'm lying here. Aren't pretzels German food anyway? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I've always thought pretzel was German. Or Hefeweizen, just to name a few examples. If you're interested in this, you should also definitely check out the channel Kelly Does Her Thing. That was actually a really good video. I enjoyed that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. It was actually really fun. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. And make sure you let me know if you guys actually use the words or whatnot. If you hear it a lot in America. Really interested to find that out. Yeah, really good video. Enjoyed that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up. Subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash If you guys want to check me out over there. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.